I just thank you for this opportunity, Lord, that I have to speak on behalf of you. And Holy Spirit, I ask that you come and fall afresh on this place. Thank you that you are already here. I pray, Lord, for hearts that hearts will be receptive to what you are wanting to say directly into their hearts today, Father. So, Lord, I pray for receptivity for each one of us. I pray for fertile soil. Holy Spirit, come and fall afresh on us. Holy Spirit, I pray that you'll move in me, that I will speak your word for now, for this season that you're calling us as a church. Amen. Amen. So we are in week two of a series, Voice of the Shepherd. So for those of you that may not have been here last week, that's absolutely fine. You can catch it on YouTube. I'm going to do a quick recap. So last week I started about why. Why do we need to listen to the voice of the shepherd? We want to start this year building on the sure foundation of Jesus. When you think of foundations as found in Matthew, they talk about the wise and the foolish man. The wise man choose, chose to build his house on the rock, which is Jesus. The foolish man built his house on the sand. And then I started to use the acronym of fool, because if we do not listen and hear and hearken to the voice of the shepherd, we could not maybe move into the fullness. We won't move into the fullness of what God has for us. The other thing is other voices. Other voices can come into your mind and take over the voice of God, and it can actually make the voice of the shepherd more and more faint. This year, we want to heighten the voice of the shepherd. We want the voice of the shepherd to be the strongest, loudest voice that we have in our lives. The other thing is, if we do not listen to the voice of the shepherd, we lose the opportunity to grow. And the L was, we are lost without his word. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And that is where we talked about uh, last week. And this morning, we start to look at how. How? How do I listen? How do I hearken? How do I draw near to the voice of the shepherd? And it's, it's all about attentive listening. Now, most of you will know my husband, Devesh, and we married for nearly a long time. 24 years we nearly married for. And uh, before we got married, so we were friends for a long time. I'm going to tell you a story now. Apologies if you've heard the story before. We've been here for 20 odd years now, so I might repeat stories. But before we got married, you know, there's certain things. If you are married to somebody, there's certain things that attract you to that person. So anyway, we, were, we belonged in this, to the same youth club. And uh, when we'd go out like maybe you do, we don't go for coffee, like you've got all your costas. South Africa's boiling hot. We usually go for ice cream and waffles, and that sounds really good now after the fast, by the way. So, you know, we would go for, for that. I, and I would maybe sit opposite the version, and I would just talk and blab on, and this guy would just listen to me. I thought, Wow, now that's a good catch, right? So I would just talk and talk and talk, and he would just listen. But I knew it was attentive listening because this guy would actually listen and then give some wise advice. And I thought, ooh, he's nice, you know? And to be honest, and I have to admit, I liked him first before he liked me. Sorry to say that. <laughs> that sounds terrible, doesn't it? So, and I used to like hearing his voice, and I used to phone him quite randomly up until one day, right, I was at work, I just started as a physio at, at our local hospital in South Africa, and I rang him, and he said, why are you keep ringing me? Do you like me? Or something. And that was the last time I, uh, I took the first move, by the way, I was like, I am not going to hear that again. Uh, so anyway, he did make the next move. We did get married eventually. Poor guy, but we did get married. Yeah. But 
He was a good attentive listening. Now, I know attentive listening is hard because even to this day, he tells me, Tracy, you are not listening. And I guess, guys, you don't really know us women, we do something called, and do it very well, selective hearing. Okay, that's what we girls do. But listening is an art, I believe, and I pray that through this week, that the voice of the shepherd has become louder in your life, that it has become the louder voice. You know, through this week, as I was spending time with the Lord, and the Lord told me, and it is in the Bible, that God is a jealous God. He doesn't want things to pollute your world that take over your world. He doesn't want those idols, and it may not be physical idols, but he doesn't want hobbies and people to take up and saturate your life, and so it moves you away from him. God is a jealous God, and this year he wants your full attention. He wants your full attention so you can move into what he is wanting for us. Can I just tell you to be aware there is a battle going on with the flesh and the spirit. And that is why this week we saw awakening. We saw revival because like Pastor Faith said, we starved the flesh, but we feasted in the spiritual. And that is what happens, guys. When we start to feast in the spiritual, there's an awakening in our soul. And God is drawing us to the quiet place this year. Because in order to listen attentively, he wants us to get into the quiet place. The inner court, as it were. Psalm 46 verse 10 says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted amongst the nation. I will be exalted on the earth. Be still and know that I am God. Now, who in this room likes to be still all the time? No, but that's not me. Sorry, why am I lifting my hand up? I, you know, being still is not our design. Let's face it. Let's face it. You want to, like, you know, <laughs> I'm a preacher. I shouldn't be saying this. But, you know, you want to have, like, excitement and parties. We have parties in church. Thank goodness we have a vibrant church because then I probably wouldn't be in our church. We can dance and we can move and we can do that. And everybody likes the loud. We do. We do. But the Lord is saying, and there's so much that can happen in the loud and in the excitement. But the Lord is saying, there's a time, church, for everything. And you see, the thing is, sometimes we miss it because we are not going into the quiet place. Now, Elijah was a great prophet of God. I know some of you, when I speak to you, you love the prophet Elijah because he's one of your favorite Bible characters. And I'm going to just read a few scriptures, and it's taken in 1 Kings chapter 19, but chapter 18. Elijah is a great prophet of God. He's doing great exploits for the Lord. This man is like power. He's a powerful man of God. He had slain the, the prophets of Baal, and, and he had asked for rain, and rain came. And then we see in chapter 19, he, um, Ahab's wife Jezebel gets to, gets to know what's happened, and they, they are now seeking to kill Elijah. And Elijah is on the run. He's on the run. He runs into the wilderness and he collapses in exhaustion. And 1 Kings 19 says this, verse 11, the Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face. He went out and stood in the mount of the cave. Then a voice said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? You see, 
Elijah expected the Lord to be in the wind. He expected the Lord to be in the earthquake. He expected the Lord to be in the fire. But there was a gentle, still whisper of the Lord. And the Lord is saying, we are missing so many keys. We are missing so many strategies. We are missing so many things that he wants to instill in us because he is whispering to us all the time because he wants us to get into that quiet place, but we refuse to be still and know that he is God. And this morning, God is wanting to draw us near to him. You know, we love big conferences. You know, the youth go to Rock Nations, the men you've been to Excel, women we go to Cherish and Color and all sorts of conferences. And we get a true excitement and it, it sometimes fans into flames and stirs us up and then we come back. And then what happens? We get to pray on our own and it doesn't seem to be the same because you see what can happen is there is only growth. There is only true growth when we are intimate with the Father. When we get to that quiet place, when we get to that place of being on our knees, time with the Lord, that is the intimacy that God is wanting us to get into this year. You see, the problem is, so often we can hide in the crowd. You see, what happens is, it's easier to hide in a crowd. There's no need for intimacy. There's no need for being stripped off what's going on in your world. And the Lord is saying to many of you, even as you sit here, you are hiding in the crowd. And the Lord wants to say to you, how long? How long will you hide in the crowd? Because Jesus is calling us. He is calling us to a greater intimacy with him. Now, Jesus sought intimacy with the Father. Now, if Jesus sought intimacy with the Father, come on, guys. Do you think we need to be seeking intimacy with the Father? We need to seek intimacy with the Father. Because, we won't, because if we don't, we miss it. We miss it. Matthew 14, 23 says, After he had sent the crowds away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. And then when it was evening, he was there alone. His alone time with the Father. Now, there's a diagram that will come up shortly. And it talks about Jesus on this earth. You know, when Jesus walked on this earth, now, if you are thinking, oh, I, I, I need to start reading my Bible, and you might be thinking, oh, this big book, where do I start? Can I encourage you? The Gospels, your Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is a powerful, great way to start reading your Bible because it is where Jesus walks on this earth. And when Jesus was amongst the crowds, there were powerful things powerful, powerful miracles taking place. There was uh, all these uh, crowds, there were great miracles, feeding off the 5,000, turning water into wine. Notice I'm talking about all food and, and happiness and festivals here, but healing the lady with the, uh, the issue of blood and the lepers and, and, and the people that came to him. There were thousands and thousands and thousands of miracles that happened, and that was the crowd. But then Jesus had his time with his 12, the disciples. And as Jesus started to develop his time with the disciples, he was teaching them. He was speaking truth because one day they will continue the good work. And then after that, there's the three, Peter, James, and John. It was like the inner circle that Jesus had. And Jesus takes these three guys. I mean, if I was one of Jesus' disciples, I want to be one of these three. Because they go up to the mountain of transfiguration where uh, Moses and Elijah appear on the mountain. And Jesus is transfigured. And they see all of this. 
What about when Jairus, who is one of the uh, leaders in the synagogue, his, his 12-year-old da da daughter dies? What happens? He takes Peter, James, and John with him, with the mom and dad, to pray for this little girl. And she is healed. And she, not healed, she's raised, as it were, because they, they pronounced her dead. And these three saw that. But for Jesus, his source of all of what happened was his lone time, was his quiet time with the Father. You see, for us to be effective in ministry, for us to be effective in our lives, it starts with that quiet time with the Father. And that is where God is calling us this, 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 to this morning, if you want to be, if you want to be the best dad, the best mom, the best friend, the best connect group leader, the best minister or whatever you do in ministry, it starts with having our quiet time with the Lord because that is an overflow into everything else you will do. You know, as a church, there's another slide, we have a, a structure as a church. We meet as a congregation together. Yeah, that's what we're meeting here. But there's a greater intimacy when we meet in our connect groups. And that's why we encourage all of you to get involved in your connect groups because there's a greater intimacy. But even greater than that is our prayer partners. And it's usually the same sex, but we meet together, we pray together, we encourage each other. And I, can I just encourage all of you that are here today that if you do not have a prayer partner, get one this year. Get somebody around you that's going to encourage you, that's going to lift you up, that's going to pray with you, that's going to strengthen you. You know, I have some awesome people in our church that pray with me. I can just say, you know, there's something going on in my world, and they will pray with me. There's a power in being together in community, in prayer, and this year I, ex I, 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 I really encourage you to get around somebody. But yet again, quiet time with the Lord, because that is where the overflow will come, guys. That is where the overflow will come. That is where the powerhouse, that is the source of everything. And the Lord is calling us this year. He's calling us to be those people that spend time with him. Can I just tell you that the Bible says, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. It's almost like the Lord is waiting for you to come to him. I feel like the Lord is saying to you, I'm waiting for you to come. When will you move? When will you start doing something? When will you stop hiding in the crowd and seek intimacy with me? It's like the Lord is beckoning us to come to him this morning. This morning, he needs us. He wants us there. Because when we get into his presence, he molds us. He shapes us. He inspires us. He encourages us. He empowers us. It's all about that quiet place. The next thing I'm going to talk about is in Jeremiah, the potter's house. And I love these scriptures. At the potter's house. But before I do that, I just want to, you know, as I was talking about quiet time with the Lord, I just sense I, I wasn't going to, but a good example for me in my life was my dad. As a little girl, I would watch my dad on his knees every morning. My dad was a pastor for over 40 years, and uh, he, he would go on his knees, and I would always think, as a little girl, I was always up early, and I would go and I would listen to his prayers. And they weren't eloquent Shakespearean type of prayers. They were seeking the Lord on his knees, like, you know, tears would be coming out of his eyes, praying for those in his world. And I just think, that's what the Lord is calling us this year. And I was so, through this week as I was preparing, I was how kept thinking about that, that the Lord is wanting us, he's calling us to this place. And, and my dad, you know, he, he was a Hindu, became Christian. I've even written a book which was launched last year. If you want to know more about that, see me afterwards. That 
out of that time with the Lord, now I understand where that came from. He had a powerful ministry, but it wasn't about his gifting. It, wasn't ab- it was all about God. It was all about the quiet time with God. It wasn't about his ability, his charisma, his personality, nothing to do with that. It was all about the quiet time with God. So this morning, whoever you are, do not think that you are not good enough. Because the Lord says you are more than able to do exceedingly abundantly more than you can ask or imagine. So God uses us ordinary people to do extraordinary things for him. And this morning, that's where he wants to take us as a church. That's where he wants to take every single one of you, us ordinary people, and do extraordinary things through us. The potter's house, Jeremiah 18. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house, and there I will give you my message. So I went down to the potter's house and saw him working at the wheel. But the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as it seemed best to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me, said, Can I do with you, Israel, as the potter does, declares the Lord, like clay in the hands of the potter, so you are in my hands, Israel. Why do we want to be in the potter's house? Why do we want to be molded and shaped into who God is wanting us to be? Because you see, when we are molded and shaped in that quiet place, we are becoming more like Jesus. We are pr- transformed to be like him. That is our goal in life, to become like Jesus. That is our goal. That is the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience. That is what we want to be, like Jesus. You know, when we become like Jesus, then his call, his cause, his mission becomes our mission. Jesus' mission was to go out and reach the lost. That now becomes our mission. You know, on our mission night on Wednesday, Pastor Jonathan played that song, One More for Jesus. And that is what the Lord is calling us this year because the word says every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. And this morning and through this year, the Lord is wanting us to mold us and shape us. He wants to equip us. He wants to encourage us. He wants to give us hope so that we could be people that go out and give the hope to others. It's not just about us. Yes, the Lord is wanting to strengthen us, but the Lord is wanting to take us to a deeper level where we see thousands reached for him. Come on, Norton is even a big place. We need to get out there. We need to get out there. And one more for Jesus, if that could just be on our heart. Every morning when we wake up, Lord, Help me, guide me, show me who I could speak to today. Who is it that I can encourage? Who is it that I can love on today? What if that became our lifestyle? You know, the vision shared when on the Thursday night, what if in Philippians, what if that became our lifestyle where we got up and thought, who can I bless today? Who can I encourage today? Holy Spirit, guide me. Holy Spirit, guide me. Now, I'm going to, underneath this, I was going to say cloche, but it's not food, right? So, yeah, sorry. Underneath this, uh, have I got it enough? Right, there we go. Is some, if you think of clay, okay, it's going to be a bit of a show and tell today, and my daughter must be thinking, mommy, have some finesse when you're dealing with these things. (laughs) So, anyway, so, clay, And when I started to think of the potter's house and you think of the clay, moldable clay that is able to be worked in the potter's hand. And as I was thinking and and praying through the sermon, something came on my heart is that sometimes clay 
can be dry. And last week I spoke about dry bones, and it's like the Lord is wanting to reiterate and reinforce this. Unfortunately for many of us, we're becoming spiritually dry. We are hiding in the crowd. And how can we become spiritually dry? How is it that we can become spiritually dry like this dry clay that's not moldable and usable by the Lord? You see, this piece of clay had to be moved away from the creator of the clay, the voice of the Lord, the voice of God. And he had to move moved away, as it were, from the rest of, of the clay. You see, what can happen spiritually in our lives if we move away from God, from the voice of God, from his work and will in our lives, we become dry spiritually. The other sign and symptom is of you becoming spiritually dry is if you move away from the body of Christ. I've seen that so many times. We move away from what God is wanting to do in our lives because you, you see it, you see it, don't we? And people just grow drier and drier and drier and drier till there's death spiritually till their spiritual death. Can I just encourage you this year, stay close to the body of Christ. Even if you are struggling to, to, to what I'm talking about, the quiet place and all of that, you stay close to the body of Christ, that will rub off on you. You will soon be drawn back. I shared this testimony before and, and the story before, and I'll share it again because some of you are so new here. But when my mom passed away in 2016, I, uh, I, it was the first time, you know, that somebody in our world had passed away, and we had lived here for many years, and we had to travel back. Rachel was only 16 months at the time, and we had to travel back. And, uh, and we went back to South Africa, and we came back. And I was just struggling spiritually. I was just like down in the dumps. I was like, Lord, Lord where are you? Where are you? I, I can't hear you. I, I can't see you. I can't feel you. And, uh, and one day I was driving home from work and I said, Lord, where are you? And it was like the Lord is saying, I'm here, Tracy. Where are you? And that, during that time, I was reading the Bible in the year. And my mom had passed away in the March 7th. And I went upstairs and I turned to my Bible and it, it's already May. I'd not even read my Bible for two months. I had moved away from the voice of the shepherd. I've moved away from God's voice. I stopped. It was all about me. And you know what? At that time, I didn't even want to go to church. I didn't feel close to anybody. So what I'm saying, it's so easy to move away from the voice of God, and that's why I encourage you, stay close to the body of Christ, please, for 2023. Some of you are still hiding in the crowd, and you're sitting here, and you probably don't even really want to be. It's like, it's a tick box, and I pray that there will be a spiritual awakening this morning, that you draw closer to Jesus like never before. But you know what? There's water in here, and just a drop of water can make this dough pliable and usable again. John 4 verse 10 says, Jesus replied, if only you knew the gift God has given you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me and I would give you living water. Jesus is our living water. And what seems dry and dead spiritually can come to life again, and the Lord can mold you and shape you into who he wants you to be. But Psalm 63 verse 1 says, you, Lord, are my God. Earnestly I seek after you. I thirst for you. My hold, 
being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no water. And you might be feeling like that, dryness, but today I have good news for you. Jesus is the living water, and he wants to bring life into that dead situation. He wants to bring hope in that dead situation today. And the other type of um, what the, the potter talks about there is the marred clay. Jeremiah 18, verse 4. But the pot he was shaping from clay was marred in his hands. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as best he could. You see, sometimes life can mar us. There can be holes. There can be things, circumstances, people that can hurt you and they mar you. They destroy you and you can feel like you're not perfect. Anyone here perfect? No. But sometimes life can do that to us. It can mar us and it can destroy us and it can leave us with so many scars. And today, even as I was preparing this, I felt like there's so many mums in the room here that you are carrying so many things from your kids that is scarring you and discouraging you and hurting you. And I just want to encourage you mums in the house. You know, like Mary in the Bible, when Jesus was doing all these things, she said, I hold these things in my heart. That's what we do, moms, isn't it? You hold things in your heart. But I feel like some things that have gone on in your world, I don't know who I'm talking to, but some things that have gone on in your world that has actually discouraged you and marred you. And, and the Lord is saying today, I can still do a good work in you. I can still do because I can do exceedingly abundantly more than you can ask or imagine. And today the Lord says, will you come to me? Will you come to me? And the last one is the potter talks about, will you Israel do what the Lord does? And I feel like that's a word for us as Destiny Church. The Lord is wanting to shape us, is wanting to mold us into who he wants us to be this year. The, the, the choice is ours, whether we are ready to do what he's called us. You know, when, I, when we arrived here 19 years ago now in April, it will be, when we arrived here, I thought, what a position our church is in. Our church is positioned, it's almost like a lighthouse in the corner to attract people and destiny. This is the year we do that. Will we be molded and will we be shaped into who God is wanting us to be? And this year, I want you to just take out your communication card that George spoke about. I want you all, I'm not seeing anybody moving, but anyway, there is connect cards in the front of you. And I would love for to see what your next step is. What could be your next step? Thanks, Jean-Jacques, for waving your card. Oy, now I see somebody moving. What could it be? What is it? What is your next step? Could it be getting up earlier in the morning? Sometimes when you write things down, you might be doing it. What about getting up in the early and some people like maybe Pastor Faith? No, other people like getting up early. What does that mean? Uh, it's dark outside. I know it's very dark. But can I just say maybe getting up early, maybe lunchtime or, or so forth. But what I would say, give your best time to Jesus. Don't do this at 11 o'clock. Thank you, Jesus. And you've gone off to sleep. Give your best time to Jesus. Could it be that you just need to start listening to more worship songs or music or something like that? What about your scripture reading? There's a good acronym to news. I like acronyms. A good acronym called SOAP, not washing soap, but SOAP, where S is for scripture, where you read through your scripture. O is for observation, where you kind of like look at the scripture and observe and what speaks to you. A is application. How does the word apply to you? And P is prayer. So S is you read your scripture. O is you observe the scripture. A is how does it apply to my life? How am I going to go and apply this? And P is praying over it. 
Now, I'm just going to finish with this. Uh, Sorry, the other things, I put loads here. Prayer partners, that might be another step that you could be, do, could be thinking. I need a prayer partner this year. And you might want to write it in your Connect card because if that's where you're at, we're going to get that for you with your Connect group leaders so that you are accountable to somebody. Also, you might be saying, I want Connect group to be a priority this year. Sometimes we might just be saying, oh, connect group, I'll go when I feel like, I'll go when I want to go. What about making connect group a priority this year and being part of it? Luke 15, verse 4 to 7, I'm going to land it here as it were. But if a man has a hundred sheep and one of them gets lost, what will he do? Won't he leave the 99 others in the wilderness and go to search for the one who is lost until he finds it. And when he has found it, he will joyfully carry it home on his shoulders. When he arrives, he will call together his friends and neighbors saying, rejoice with me because I have found a sheep. In the same way, there is more joy in heaven over one lost sinner who repents and turns to God than over 99 others who are righteous and have strayed away. This morning, we sit in a congregation and we could be representing the 100 sheep. And today, you could be the one that is lost. But when I read these scriptures, it wasn't just about lost as in you, you haven't received Jesus. I just sense some of you are so spiritually dry that you've actually lost Jesus in your journey. And the Lord is saying we need to repent today and come to him. We need to start seeking him earnestly. There needs to be a thirst and hunger after him. I just like to pray for those that are, do not know Jesus as their savior today and we serve a good shepherd. You see, the good shepherd says, I'll leave my 99 and I'll go out for you because I love you. I want you to be part of what I am doing. I want you to be part of this good thing that I'm going to do for your life. And this morning, if you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, Wherever you are in this room, just lift up your hands and just say this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, I admit that I've gone my own way, but this morning I believe that you are the Son of God and you, you died for my sin. I confess before you and I say sorry for what I have done in the past, but today I receive you as the Lord and Savior of my life. And if that's you here today, I encourage you to come and see us after the service or write it in that Connect card. We are wanting to speak to you. We are wanting to pray with you. We are wanting to encourage you. And this morning, I want to pray right now for those that have moved away from the voice of God. You are feeling spiritually dry this morning. You are feeling like you've lost. You are hiding in the crowd. You might have been hiding there for years and years and years, but you are hiding in the crowd. You see the lady with the issue of blood for 12 years, she was bleeding and bleeding. She might have thought so many times to go to Jesus. She may have been that person that was hiding in the crowd, but on that day, it took a step of faith to say, if I can only touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. And this morning, if that is you today and you are feeling spiritually dry, I encourage you right now to just put your hands up and touch the hem of his garment and today you will be restored you will be healed you will be set free in the name of jesus in the name of jesus lord we come again against spiritual dryness in this place 
We say, Lord, that today you are filling again. You are awakening us spiritually, that we will be a church that is ready to be molded and shaped by you like never before. Today, if you're feeling mad, if you're feeling like life is taking hold of you, can I just encourage you? The Lord is saying, "Come on, I need you to trust in me. I need you to stop leaning on your own understanding. I need you to trust in me like never before, because I am going to do a new thing in your life. All those hurts and pains, all those times of discouragement, I am going to turn it into a." powerful testimony that you are going to share and bring others to Jesus. Church, let us arise. This is just like Pastor Faith has said, it's just the start of what God is wanting us wanting to do in us. Will you be molded and shaped Will you choose to go into the potter's house every single day of your life so you can be molded and shaped into who he wants you to be? And that is where the Lord says we should be. And he says, "Draw near to me in 2023, and I will show you things that are you will never comprehend church destiny. The Lord is wanting to take us to new places." new heights new beginnings he's wanting to birth new things in us as a church are we ready and i pray that you through this week you will continue to fast don't just stop fasting because we've started fasting keep going with fasting get it into your life create the habit of fasting do it with your spouse do it with your friend once a week connect groups do it together let's not lose what god has given us but let us continue in the revival that he has for us in jesus name amen amen